as I explained earlier in regards to like the banking system, right? Mm. So say for example, if every year you make a certain amount of money mm. and you say at the end of every year you want to um, bank that money, mm. compare it to if you say, okay, I'm going to take that money that I'm planning to bank mm. and buy a property that is with that within that budget. Okay. Yeah. Then every year you will be adding your 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 um what they call it your network your portfolio as well yeah you add your portfolio but your network grow that's because true then that's true you're not just own like a 400 acres of land mm. you probably own now a 4,000 acre because even though you have 400 here you might have another 400 Correct. down there you have Correct. another 500 Correct. you understand all of that added up diverse investment right there's a secret war going on for real estate in africa yes trust me not just africa all over the world and today we want to share our our experience and things that we've learned from doing research about real estate especially in africa and we want to share that with you so if you are interested in this kind of conversation make sure to subscribe and stay tuned to queen jody and ap on set <laughs> yes. All right. My name is AP. <laughs> and I'm Queen Jody. <laughs> yes. And on this podcast, guys, we talk about real estate opportunities that are available in Africa. That's right. right? Sometimes we even compare it to things, uh, real estate information that are outside of right. Africa. Right. And, you know, make it make sense for people <laughs> who are interested in investing in real estate or just doing business in real estate mm. overall, right? Yeah. So shout out to our regular listeners. Yeah, shout out to Yeah, our... shout out to you. You know yourselves. Oh, my God. You are in the world. <laughs> Much yeah. love and respect. You yes, see it. Yeah. You guys have been more than supportive to us, and we cannot thank you enough for supporting our podcast. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Ah, so, so now we're at our second. We're still. We're in our second season. Yeah, we're yeah. still in our second season, and it has been very good thus far. You know, I see the episodes are well received. So, guys, please do us a favor and share this with someone. Yeah, anyone that you know that is interested in investing or learning about real estate mm -hmm. in Africa. They're going to want to watch this podcast, okay? All right, so guys, we're going to start it off. The war, secret war on real estate. Our Is for real estate secret, in though? Africa. Wait, your mic, they're too far from your mouth. Wait, so my Bring mic, they're too somewhere. far. All right, hold on. Guys, let yeah. set up my mic. Close yeah, uh -huh, that mouth. one is good. Yeah, can you hear me? <laughs> All right. <laughs> secret, secret war on for, for real estate mm. in Africa. I in, mean... Yeah, hmm. We are going for real estate a long time still, you know. Yeah. Brother and sister, you know, kings and queens. Yeah, it's and like them a things from long time. Long time thing. Yeah. It's like, listen to me, this territory is mine. Yeah. Even though people are going to war over exactly. real estate, like all over the world. Yeah. But in Africa, because Africa is becoming like, you know, the next hit thing to the world, like it's a place where people can come and live mm -hmm. and explore. They're like there's so many unexplored mm -hmm. opportunities in Africa, and but, real estate but is Epi, one of them. Epi, yes. really no, Africa is the next hit thing. Africa uh, was always it's, the hit. It's, you know, no, you, you don't know what I mean. Commercially, you okay, understand because okay. before, it, yeah, yeah, before nobody was talking about Africa the way like that, that people are talking about that's it now. True. So that's what I mean. The next hit thing, guys, okay. you know. Even though you know you have some people that try to spoil the thing, so why now? Why now? Why, why now is the right time to buy real estate? Because a lot of people will say, "Boy, me, I don't know if now is the right time to mm. buy real estate mm. based on what you've seen." Mm. Why would you say now is the best time for buy real estate? Listen to me, real estate aside from everything else, mm. yeah, that you can do, real estate is the top. And will forever be the top thing a person mm. can invest in. Yeah. The top, yeah, um, asset mm. anyone can invest in. Okay. Um, and right now, it's even better to be banking your money in lands and mm. real estate overall mm. than banking your money in the bank. Mm. You understand? Because when you compare what you can earn, especially if you're investing in prime locations, yeah. then... Your investment can grow, you understand, over mm. a period of time. Maybe, say for example, you put 10 million in the bank. Mm. How much um, percentage you will get? If you feel just leave that 10 million, how much you would make in 10 years' time on that <laughs> money versus if you have a prime location land and in 10 years' time you say, yo, let me buy this, let me sell this land 
or give it to a developer to develop. That is true. You understand? Yeah. Then the amount of returns that you'll be seeing it would be greater than what the banks will be giving you either way. That is true. You yeah. have a set of people here in the Gambia. I always talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Hule. Yes. Those people, they go around and they buy prime land, as you talk about prime land, like, you know, roadside lands, mm -hmm. land that are mm -hmm. in areas that maybe three, four years from now, mm -hmm. there's going to be development. And then later, yeah, like they buy it now for less than nothing, or maybe lower. Mm -hmm. And then the next three, four, five years, they're selling it for millions. You mm -hmm. understand? Mm -hmm. This is the nature of the game. That's called land banking. Land banking, yeah. Yes, yeah. that's called land banking. When you identify a, a location where you can estimate, like, okay, based on the trajectory of development that is coming down uh -huh, this side, uh -huh, uh -huh. anywhere around this part. I, if I buy it the next five years yeah, from now, yeah. I can sell it for a premium price. Exactly so. You know, while exactly some people so. will look at, for example, some people will say, okay, yeah, but that's based on the location. But some people will say, yo, the Gambia is not developed. It's not a country that have enough infrastructure. But still, land is one of the most expensive thing here. Like, yeah. if you buy a piece of land right now, you're talking millions. Yeah, I mean, like, you can't... Well, people used to say uh, land, land, land I go out of style. Mm. But land, to be honest, land never go out of style, whether yeah. you buy it locally or internationally. That's true. You understand? That's and true. even if you sell a piece of land today to somebody, mm. next five, ten years from now, maybe that person wants to sell it back again. That's correct. You understand? Because That's they correct. decide they want to relocate somewhere else mm. or, you know, they need it for another investment. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. So, real estate will always be the thing mm. that countries go to war for, mm. um, families fight for, you understand? And uh, people invest in, especially multimillionaires and billionaires, the, most of their um, investment is in real estate. Yes. You understand? There is right now, right now, according to reports, what I see. You know, remember we were in Jamaica? Yeah. We never used to hear this big talk about real estate. No, that's true. Like, we never hear it. I'm not saying it wasn't going around, yeah. but it's not something that was talked about like now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now but you we, have... were even, we're, we weren't even in that space either way. Yes, but no, when we even start to go in this space, like mm -hmm. start to research it and mm -hmm. become more aware of it. Yeah. There was never like a big talk buzz, about yeah. it. Yeah, but now when we come to Africa, you see like there's a massive buzz on real estate in Especially Jamaica. Especially in Africa. Yes. And then when you check it out, it's like now there's a there's a rush especially for lands like buying lands in mm -hmm. in jamaica right now there's a there's a massive rush now mm -hmm. they have a lot of investment firms a lot of people are changing their business operation mm -hmm. to real estate mm -hmm. investing because that's where the money is right yeah, now yeah and you can see the same thing is happening in africa right now where small countries like the gambia you know People are becoming more, what you call this now, up to date mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> on, on, on certain practices of real estate. I mean, they might not know all of real estate in terms of, for example, flipping and, and you know, mm -hmm. bird dog and all these things. They don't know what these things mean, M yeah. maybe in terms of terminologies, in yeah. so, like here in Gambia, but they are aware of buying and selling. Yeah, <laughs> for most persons. And banking. Yeah, most yeah. persons may... And banking. So, I have to ask you, because, yeah. you know, we've been doing this for some time now. What is the advantage, you think, of owning a plot of land? Would you? What is the advantage of mm. owning a plot of land in the Gambia now? Let's say Gambia, because that's where we are. Mm. So, we have to talk about it. The advantage, um, as we usually share on our podcast before, mm. is that um, when, when a person can purchase a land in the Gambia and own it outright. Wow. Right. At this point in time is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Um not saying leasing lands is a bad thing either because mm. how long will you be living for that you will have that land to live on? Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And your kids, even if you leave it for your kids, if they don't decide that they want that piece of land, they're gonna sell it anyways. Yes. You get me? So having a plot of land here in the Gambia is an advantage because, mm. you know, um, it's more af it's still affordable compared to some locations, mm. especially persons who are thinking of like 
their their investment amount is not a big amount. Yeah. You understand? Mm. They can still come here and get something reasonable, you know, without burning them pocket. That's what you're what you're saying is true. You know, it's still right now still reasonable to buy mm -hmm. a piece of land in, mm -hmm. in Gambia. I'm not saying Gambia is the cheapest place. I mean you can go to Kenya and buy a land for cheaper than you can buy it in Gambia. But still the advantage with buying the land here in the Gambia is that I don't know if they're gonna be changing the laws anytime soon when it comes to that. But in Kenya mm. you have to have a Kenyan on your title. Not yeah. saying that that Kenyan will be the one to own the land, but the idea, most persons will not go for the idea of having someone that is not their family member mm. on a piece of title because to them, it will be like, this person also owned the land with but me. But they do also own the land. That's the point. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> That's in, the point. In, in, in documentation, exactly. it will say that, Ma, but for, for documentation for is word of mouth, they will say no. It's just that the person no, has to no, be no, on no. the document. Documentation is everything, sir. I mean, my brothers and sisters in Kenya, if that's <laughs> what is happening there, like if they, they will tell you now. They will come in yes, and tell please, you. Yes, please do. That, all right, to listen, confirm. I don't have a piece of paper here. Because you me. know, a man will but, tell you. Wait, a man will tell you. Say, oh no, man, everything all right, man. Is you are the rightful owner. But listen. it's just that. I have to just make sure say that person name the pan it still. Listen to what I'm saying to you. A documentation is a documentation. It doesn't matter. <laughs> if I have a piece of documentation, right? Yeah. If you, if you have a piece of documentation that says you are the owner, mm -hmm. Queen Jody is the owner mm -hmm. of the uh the biggest hotel in Africa. Ah, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not you're not going to say now that um Oh, it's just word of mouth. It's not real. Mm -hmm. the, the documents is going to speak out. So, so based on that, now, yes, when you buy a piece of land in, yeah. in Kenya, well, not Kenya, I don't like Tanzania, yeah, and somebody, a local person, name is on it. You cannot say that that person is not the also the owner. It's joint ownership, which is actually not joint bad. Joint ownership is not bad. It's, but then the trust has to be there. It's it's not bad, and I, I I'm going to tell you why I think they do it like that. They don't want their lands to be sold off entirely to foreigners that may use the land for generations, and it it don't it don't go back to the people. I you know, understand. Because some people are coming, but they're not necessarily integrating, you know. Yeah. But I, mean, I, I, see a lot of, I see a lot of descendants that are integrated, yeah, though. Yeah. They're getting married to locals, having kids. So yes. that land is going to go back in mm -hmm. the bloodline mm -hmm. and continue. Mm -hmm. It's going to stay local, not necessarily, you know, go to somebody that is not from the place, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. you understand, or not mm -hmm. of that I understand. people. That brings me to the next point that I want to cover because based on the fact that that's one of the advantages, but why do you believe that non-Africans are buying up real estate? Like, and when I said non-African, me, I'm not, this is not a racist channel, just to make you guys know we don't deal with that. Um, yeah, but, but AP, why? MP, hmm. if, okay, it's not we alone using this mic, right? Hmm. Maybe the idea of the person be creating this mic in the first place is for mm. like podcasters, for example. Yes, that's correct. But mm. it's not only podcasters are using mic. No. You get me? Mm. So in the same sense, like land is available everywhere. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And in truth and in fact, most people is first, first come, first serve. Yes. And if you have the money or not, yes. you understand. Mm. If you are doing business, you are doing business. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, yes, a business owner might have the choice of saying, well, I'm only going to sell to this person only. Yeah. And that's fair and fine because that's your target audience. But you cannot limit everybody who have a land to say, don't sell your land to somebody else if they decide to, like, quote, unquote, non-Africans. Non um, non you understand? Mm. That is true. You get me? That is true. But I think, I think that... As I said, Africa mm -hmm. is the next eight thing. Mm -hmm. And people with deep pockets are paying attention to what is happening in, <laughs> in Africa. You well, know? some of these and persons are even integrating as well. That's what I'm saying. But the point is, mm -hmm. they, are, they are focusing on 
expanding their money internationally and the opportunity is there mm -hmm. to buy it and if africans whether they were born here or not are not the ones that are buying it then other people will buy it. exactly <laughs> if, if that's what i'm saying if it's, it's like, sitting there they will buy it's, it it's like you're out there you're selling and you say okay i have benachina sell anybody will want to eat benachina and know about benachina and want to taste benachin you understand it's, i go it's, buy benachin it's, it's funny you say that because there's a lot of people that don't know about benachin if you're coming to the gambia make sure you check out benachin you will not regret that <laughs> yeah, yeah ap favorite that yeah <laughs> unless um, unless it's cooking my house it's the favorite one outside i'm not so sure no disrespect <laughs> but yeah it's the truth but okay, Epi, I mean, you're on the topic of like, why non, non, um, what you say? Finance? No, it's a point. It's a point. It's why, a point. why do, why do we believe that? And as I said, the opportunities. But you can't really blame them. The opportunities that are available yeah. is the reason why people are buying. It's not a matter of race now. It's no. not a matter of race. No. It's like, why are people that are not of African descent are, are doing it versus the ones that are of African descent that are not doing it. But th that's that's exactly what I'm coming to yeah, again, that. AP. Like, I'm, I'm just saying, like, you can't blame a person who is non-African who buy, would say, wow, this is a golden opportunity for me to own a plot of land here in Ghana, G Gambia, wherever they decide to go in the African countries. Yeah, that's right? true. Because... They, they see the opportunity and they know what they can do with it. They know that they have the big pockets. So it's not a problem for them. Yeah, but I think it's more than that, though. I think it's more like just the opportunities that are presenting itself mm -hmm. in Africa, mm -hmm. especially African countries that people believe that is... In Jamaica, I don't know if they have it, this terminology anywhere else. Where? Baka wall, baka water, like low, low not up to standard mm -hmm. countries and you know a lot of people will evade those countries to go to the the nice luxurious countries <laughs> which is cool because there are also real estate opportunities there but the yeah. ones the countries that are not necessarily like up to a certain developing mm -hmm. development yet you know people tend to stay away while the big pocket people will go there and buy these things more yeah right and the truth is the next point is, like, you don't really need a lot to start, like... No. I've been observing the real estate game since me personally. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You can share your point. Mm -hmm. I've been observing the real estate game since we moved to Africa yeah. in 2020, end of 2020, correct? Mm -hmm. And I've seen how the real estate opportunities here in Africa is quite, not necessarily difficult to access maybe now it's getting a little bit more difficult as people are getting more aware that they can sell a land or a house for a high price or maybe the the price on cement or maybe the price on mm -hmm. labor is increasing mm -hmm. so therefore they're going to double triple quadruple their mm -hmm. price versus before when things mm -hmm. were more you know accessible a man could have, as you said do land banking very easy you yeah, know you just yeah. buy a 20 by 20 meters and I think that's 400 square meters of land mm -hmm. and basically sell it back for a higher price and make some money. Yeah. I mean, yeah. most persons who do investment in land tend to go for like bigger plots instead of just a regular 20 but you by can, 20. But you can start, but you you can can start, start with, with that. that. Yeah. You can spend like, you can spend like one, t literally, you use, I don't know about now, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you used to have plots of land that is selling for 1000 US dollars that's around what now 70000 dollars eh? I think the cheapest we've well the most affordable lands that we've seen is like within the range of 150000 dollars No we see cheaper than is that, it cheaper than that Of now? course we, that's what I just told you they, okay. there we see land selling 55000 50, cheap we see land selling for 70000 cheap no, and no, fifty-five thousand. No, 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 no. Listen to what I'm okay. saying, please. I said before. Before, yeah. You used to have lands that were selling cheap. Yeah. But now, that those things are not there anymore. That's like true. That. And then, mm. if you really look at it, guys, um, real estate, um, the cost of real estate tend to go up. Aside from the inflation, yeah, it goes up with the standard of living. That's true. You understand. I mean, if you find in one location, you, you have like five 
luxury apartments yeah. that are being built. Mm. And then you find that the roads now are coming up to a level where... It's going to increase. You understand? The, and, and there are still like empty lands and small houses that people are considering to probably, you know, rebuild to even fit another luxury um, apartment there. Yeah. So mm. that area, the development aspect of it will cause that area to the, the pricing to increase. There is a place now in the Gambia. I don't know. Maybe most of you guys who are watching and been to Gambia will know this. Mm -hmm. Like it's called Farato. I remember I used to drive past the junction yeah. going down. That, that junction can lead towards the airport. It was dirt road. Rainy season, it would be problems to mm -hmm. drive on that mm -hmm. stretch of road. Now, recently, they're getting nice roads. The road is clean. Yeah. Right? And then more and more people that have money are going into the that area and they're building some massive structures mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we have a friend of ours that have a 10 by 25 there yeah he, he <laughs> buy it he buy it for very cheap he buy that piece of land for very cheap and now that piece of 10 by 25 if he don't mind shop it's going to be around one million dollars for just that 10 by 25 it's possible that's how expensive I mean, that piece of land is in Gambia, from my like understanding, that. when it comes to even measurement of lands, mm. um, Senegal mostly sell like sizes like that, 10 yeah, by yeah, 15, yeah. 10 by 25. Exactly, exactly. But here, from my understanding, you don't sell those size unless you, as a developer, are developing that area. Like you'll be selling a built-out house on it. No, people, people, when you have right now in, in the hot areas like Bijilo, Brusibi, um, you know, guys, you have lands that like 10 by 20 you know 10 by 15 for like 1 million dollar sales mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. 3 million there there's a client that reached out to us i'm still waiting to hear back from them they have this land in brewfoot i think they say it's it's a little bit bigger than that i think they say it's 35 by mm -hmm. some 30 something they wanted they're asking for um 4 million dollars for it with negotiation Mm. If you come through our channel, yeah, with negotiation, right? <laughs> yeah, so we're still waiting to hear from them. But in Brufoot area, mm -hmm. you see that land is and, not... And Brufoot is fairly Brufoot is by near the beach. You yeah, can walk to yeah. the beach from that land. But the point is, it's not like square. Not all lands are square, you know. Yeah. If you have a 10 by 15, you can sell it. Especially if it's in a prime location. You understand, understand. what I mean? understand. So... The other thing that I that I want to talk about with you is building generational wealth through real estate. Mm. You know, this is where a lot of people don't really pay attention to real estate from this perspective mm -hmm. because it's like everything you are doing in life, there's a barrier to, barrier to entry. Mm. And before you get to the sweet part, you have to go through the bitter part first. That's true. You know, you're going to have ups and downs. You're going to invest. You're going to fail at invest. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to do it again because you know what you're trying to accomplish. It's like a lot of people buy a lot, all right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you go, you buy the lotto ticket. There is no guarantee that you're going to win the lotto. But you're spending your money on the lotto. And you're expecting you want to win that jackpot. But unfortunately, you keep losing, 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 mm -hmm, losing, losing. Mm -hmm. And for some people, they are fortunate. in, And that's even worse. Huh? Mm. That's like a one in a trillion up a, um, chance of you winning lotto. Mm -hmm. Well, real estate, you have a higher chance of actually succeeding at investing in real estate. Yeah. To build generational wealth. That's true. Even if, it's, even if, you're, buy a, even if you're buying small size lands. Yeah. Be all right. As I explained earlier in regards to like the banking system, right? Mm. So say, for example, if every year you make a certain amount of money mm. and you say at the end of every year you want to um, bank that money, mm. compare it to if you say, okay, I'm going to take that money that I'm planning to bank mm. and buy a property that is with that, within that budget. Okay. Yeah. Then every year you will be adding your 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 um what they call it your network your portfolio as well yeah you add your portfolio but your network grow that's because true then that's true you're not just own like a 400 acres of land mm. you probably own now a 4,000 acre 
Because even though you have 400 here, you might have another 400 down Correct. there. You have Correct. another 500. Correct. You understand? All of that added up. Diverse investment. Right. Yeah. Now, in different, different locations. And guess what? With the different, different location, you have different, different prices. That, because of the development. That, 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 first, overall, that is, that is called smart investing. Mm -hmm. When you, you don't put your money, all of your money in... In one location. Yeah. It's like putting your eggs in one basket. Exactly. You go to this area, you're like, yo, this area is nice. Me, I want to buy 10,000 acres here. Mm -hmm. How about, okay, buy half an acre here. Go down this section. Yeah. Buy a quarter acre there. Go here. Buy a couple meters there. Go there. And it, you're, you're, you're spreading your money out. Yeah. Because when you're buying real estate, you always negotiate. This is Africa. You negotiate everything. It's like that. <laughs> and you negotiate your price down. And, you know, you get a price that makes sense to you. Even if it's $10,000, mm -hmm. so you save on it. Well, the negotiation only comes when the um, property owner is flexible. If the property owner is flexible, you can yeah. negotiate. But if they are not, ah, me, I'm sorry that they will never. They will just send you out. Bye. Yeah. You know, but it's possible to build wealth through real estate investing, not just in Africa, there, but anywhere you are in the world. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. if it if it permits you, you mm -hmm. can buy it because there are cheap lands in the U.S. as well. Maybe it's not going to be in the ideal location for you, mm -hmm. but it's it's available. I mean, yeah. Epi, um, look at true. it this way. Um, you, some, you would say, like, why people would want to buy lands here or invest in yeah. lands here in Africa. Yeah. The truth is, many of us, um, that we would call ourselves, like, descendants yes. of Africans, right? Correct. And for some people, they, they, they feel entitled because I'm a descendant. I should be coming here and getting a land for free. Mm -hmm. However... Mm -hmm. In the sense that you are not welcome to like that to say give you a free land, yeah, and the opportunity is there for you to purchase. Do I think it. it's still a fair, fair thing, <laughs> Do you it. know, because yeah. either way, you say you want a piece of the motherland, and you're having the opportunity, even if it's not given for free, mm. you know. So purchasing it is still a good way to get. I mean, here. at least you will have your, you will have whatever you exactly. have to show that you own it. It's and then like later that. on, you can say my kids have somewhere for free. Correct. Yeah. Well, it's because not free. Because you paid for it. Yeah. You it's, understand? It's, it's not like free. when the it Christians will say Jesus paid the debt for them. It's not free. It's like you. It's like you. You invest in something for your generation. Exactly. And it's building generational wealth. Yeah. It's funny how you touch on African descendants because I have a point where I want to touch on like why African descendants are running away from investing mm -hmm. in Africa, especially real estate, because that's what we're talking about. Like, when you really check, like, the media, I think the media have a lot to do mm -hmm. with it, how it's being advertised about real estate investing in Africa. Well, certain African countries. Yes. Especially in the Gambia now, when you really check real estate investing in the Gambia, mm -hmm. most of what you hear is negatives. I'm not saying it's not across the entire Africa, but Gambia somehow, <laughs> it's much more marketed. Mm -hmm. And yes, there are issues with real estate investing in Gambia and any, anywhere. That's true. However, there are risks involved. There are, that's why I said there is no risk-free investing in real estate. Nowhere. I'm exactly. telling you. But if you do your homework, if you know what you're going for, you have your head screw and then you will have what you need. Yeah. You yeah. understand what I mean? But I think media have a lot to do with it mm -hmm. about how people present real estate opportunities mm -hmm. or experiences to people who are from the, the, the diaspora who is coming to Africa mm -hmm. and want to access it. Yeah. So they're like, yeah, what? Me, I'm running. I mean, we always say this, like, everyone's experience is not it's yours. It's different, exactly. And everyone's experience will always be different. That's true. I mean, even if someone comes close to an experience, there's something that makes it different or mm. more unique than the other. That's true. And, okay, for example, can you say every business owner never lose um, don't lose money nah, i mean i see business owner business lose owners millions lose money. <laughs> us dollars millions yeah it's like that you know 
the way how things, as you said, have been presented to through the media, mm. people will have this fear like, oh my, okay, look for example, um, with the pandemic the other day, and yeah. people were like scared to travel. Oh my God, I don't want to travel because. <laughs> but some people start to take the bold step and still travel. Um, pack them bags mm-hmm. and buy them tickets and like we are out of here. Some some yeah. people like ourselves. We yeah, I understand. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it's like that. Mm. And to be honest, I would advise anyone like even ourselves, we advise ourselves that like we will not allow other people's experience to determine how we live life here in Africa. Yeah. You understand? That's true. And we, we, that's we are true. not we are not being naive and we're not saying that like Oh my God! Things won't happen to us here. We won't experience this. Our things are not Our happening. Our things to us. are not happening. <laughs> but from we just practice to you know make the best of every situation That's and the key. ensure that we learn with lessons. That's the key. You understand? Because That's the key. you don't just have experience for experience sake. I mean, if you are just having experience in real estate for experience sake, hmm. then why 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 are you in real estate then you understand yeah, like that's true that's true you 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 would want to be owning your own properties once you start learning about the investment that's all Ex- exactly yeah yeah i think so too i agree with every statement that you make in terms of like you know running away from it is not the answer necessarily maybe educating is the best move mm-hmm. maybe mm-hmm. not trying to tear people down is the best move instead of doing that maybe creating an institution that can help people if you can do it yourself mm-hmm. <laughs> is yeah it, yeah you know try to find a way to help people instead of drive fear is is, is a is a major that, move especially in right now but but ap mm. you, you, in the beginning we started out we said there's a war on real estate there's a war on real estate so in that sense a war for real estate when when you mention about you know people not doing driving fear in other people mm. you understand that's the goal for those the war makers yeah it's like you understand <laughs> because they want people to fear so that them can it's like you want the dog for just get scared and run left the meat so that you can chop the meat yourself you want it <laughs> yeah it's like that's 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 the agenda of you know instead m- of share it many people who see the 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 what you call it now the money behind real estate Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's like yo me i want that money but the outcome is going to be different when all is said and done yeah i like how you said that ap Mm. when they see the money but to me you know Mm. in real estate i don't just see money Mm. because i see integrity people have to trust you you understand yeah 